so guys we are going to talk about the ovaries now ovaries are female gonads here are the ovaries i wrote that down these are the ovaries <laughs> this is a single ovary actually so when we talk about the ovary and when we talk about anatomy of ovary so first of all we should talk about its position position then we will talk about its structural features and then its peritoneal relations the peritoneal relation we will talk about in the last but first its position the as you know i showed here the ovaries are present laterally this was the lateral pelvic wall this was the uterus which was about or approximately at midline of the body this was the vagina but the ovaries were present laterally close to the lateral pelvic wall in fact the ovaries are present inside a fossa on the lateral pelvic wall called the ovarian fossa so what is actually ovarian fossa ovarian fossa is a shallow depression a shallow depression on the lateral pelvic wall which contains the ovary this shallow depression here or oh, sorry here <clears throat> ovarian fossa is lined by parietal <clears throat> parietal peritoneum along with its boundaries if we talk about so medially we would have the um, lateral pelvic wall right if we talk about anteriorly we would have obliterated umbilical artery and posteriorly if we talk about we would have the ureter and internal iliac vessel so this was the ovarian fossa ovarian fossa is a shallow depression or lateral pelvic wall lined by parietal peritoneum with the boundaries anteriorly the obliterated umbilical artery medially the lateral pelvic wall and posteriorly we would have the ureter and internal iliac vessel this ovarian fossa is very tricky to understand but if you just under, you know keep in mind that it is just a shallow depression on lateral pelvic wall what is lateral pelvic wall we all know that i guess but i will still draw that out for you so let me zoom that in so here if we talk about it we see on the lateral side the iliac crest here is the anterior superior iliac spine iliac crest from here will arise the anterior superior iliac spine here the symphysis pubis from symphysis pubis the you know ischial tuberosity lesser sciatic foramen ischial spine greater sciatic foramen and then the from here the pelvic premolar pectinate line here we would have the obturator foramen from right here we would have the first sacral vertebra then the sacral sacral vertebra third fourth and fifth and from here we would get three coccygeus vertebra three or four actually so these are actually fused the coccygeus and the sacrum so this is the lateral pelvic wall the bony framework of the lateral pelvic wall now there's an important muscle here which actually arises from the obturator membrane lining the obturator foramen this muscle is called the obturator's internus muscle leaves through the shared lesser sciatic foramen so this is the obturator internus muscle the reason i'm talking about the obturator internus muscle because it actually forms a lateral pelvic wall lateral pelvic wall it is actually present on the lateral pelvic wall and on this muscle is this ovarian fossa it's with depression on it its depression is lined by parietal peritoneum which is actually covering the lateral pelvic wall this was just an idea of the lateral pelvic wall now to give an idea of the structures these female reproductive structures to give idea how the ovary is present on lateral pelvic wall we draw that out again just keeping the sacrum and sorry the uh, <laughs> symphysis pubis and the sacrum so this is the symphysis pubis this is the sacrum 
from here the caucasus will arise now to keep in mind here we have a bladder here we have the vagina and from the vagina on the anterior wall of the vagina from we have the uterus from the lateral side of the uterus we have the fallopian tube arising going laterally through infundibulum we have attached ovary so this is the ovary present on the lateral pelvic wall keep these two structures in mind let me zoom that out now so these two structures keep them in mind so this was the about the position of the ovary so guys structural features of the ovary i will very quickly try to describe these structural features they are pretty easy to understand the uterus was in the midline so it is the medially and the ovaries were on the lateral side so they are present laterally so this is the lateral side structural features of the ovary we talk about it oval in shape ovaries are actually oval in shape right so they have a superior and inferior pole now the superior pole of the ovary is actually called the tubal pole why it is called the tubal pole because it is related with the infundibulum of the uterine tube uterine tube is superior to it and uh, and actually in it is related uh, to the uterine tube that is why it is called the tubal pole the inferior po uh, pole is actually called the uterine pole because it is related with the uterus now the inferior pole superiorly we have you know the ovary attached with the infundibulum with the fimbria of infundibulum right but inferiorly we actually have another structure which attached to the inferior pole of the ovary this structure is actually called the round ligament of the ovary here this is the round ligament of ovary attached to the lower pole of the ovary to the uterine lateral uterine border this is called the round ligament of ovary it is present inside the broad ligament of uterus this blue two peritoneal fold it is present between these two peritoneal folds so this was the ovary two poles it also has two surfaces and two borders the surfaces are actually lateral surface and a medial surface borders are actually anterior border and posterior border now the lateral surface of the ovary is related to the lateral pelvic wall or to ovarian fossa we know the ovarian fossa was actually present on the lateral pelvic wall it was also related to the obturator vessels or and obturator nerve now here the medial border is related to the uterus broad ligament of the uterus now the borders we were talking about the posterior border which is called actually the free border the posterior border of the ovary is actually called free border i can show you posterior border because this is a 2d diagram right so the posterior border would be posteriorly of course and it is it is actually called free border while the anterior border is related to the broad ligament of the uterus it is called meso ovarian border what is it called meso ovarian border now meso ovarian border why, why is it called meso ovarian border it is is actually called meso ovarian border because of meso ovarium what is meso ovarium i'm just going to tell you why what is meso ovarium just after telling you what actually the surface of ovary look like so guys the surface of the ovary right you need to understand one thing before ovulation or before the puberty the female gonads the ovaries are actually pink in color and they are they are actually pink in color and they are smooth whereas after puberty after puberty the surface of the ovaries become irregular uneven and it also turns gray in color so this was the surface of the ovary few features of the surface of ovary with relay which are related to you know the female uh, life of the female before puberty and after puberty 
we were talking about meso ovarian border we will talk about it in the peritoneal relations but before we do the peritoneal relations of the ovary we need to understand one thing the long axis of the ovary in this diagram i have drawn a long axis this is the long axis of the ovary which is almost vertical this is true only for the nulliparous women what are nulliparous women the women which never had a child before these are called the nulliparous women in these women the long axis of ovary is actually almost vertical this is not almost vertical but you get the idea it would be like okay let me draw here it would be almost like this but when a woman had child has had child or uh, maybe two or three her ovaries the long axis of her ovaries would be a horizontal almost horizontal like this so let's place this ovary in the diagram above right so this was the or, uh, original ovary right if we try to draw it horizontally so this is like this is the structure this will be almost the structure they will be present like this and from here would arise the round ligament of uterus no sorry ovary so what i am actually trying to say is that nulliparous in nulliparous women the long axis of ovary is almost vertical whereas in multiparous women the women which had one or two child will have the ovaries almost horizontal their long axis will be almost horizontal so let's so guys before talking about meso ovarium just give uh, giving a little background about the ovary we know this is the broad ligament of uterus right anterior layer of peritoneum posterior layer of peritoneum of broad ligament of uterus then we have this parametrium in between we have uterine tube on the top and posteriorly we have the ovary so let's cut the ovary let's take this transverse section of the ovary after cutting the ovary we would see that this is the ovary right with the broad ligament of uterus anteriorly the anterior layer the posterior layer the posti the when we talk about the reason i you know didn't continue the posterior layer is that the peritoneum of the ovary it covers the ovary completely anterior posterior medial lateral sides except a small portion on the anterior surface of the ovary this small portion not covered by peritoneum of the ovary is called the hilus of the ovary why is it not covered by peritoneum because the peritoneum reflects back and attaches with the posterior layer of broad ligament of uterus so you see this was a broad ligament of uterus right anterior layer posterior layer posterior layer continue with the peritoneum of the ovary in between we had the parametrium the connective tissue between the two layers of broad ligament of uterus here was the ovary now the area of ovary not covered by peritoneum was called the hilus of the ovary let me write that down hilus of ovary whereas this region this peritoneal fold this peritoneal reflection is called the mesovarium mesovarium this mesovarium is the reason that the anterior border of the ovary is called the mesoovarian border right here i wrote down the meso ovarian border right this is the this was the anterior border was actually the meso ovarian border so this is the meso ovarian meso ovarian is a reflection of peritoneum on anterior surface of the ovary this is called the meso ovarian meso ovarian forms the hilus of the ovary and from the hilus actually the blood vessels and nerves of ovary enter here the vessels coming in you know from sides or different places they come and enter from here into the ovary 
So this was about the meso ovarium, the anterior border, the posterior border, two surfaces, the long axis of ovary. I also told you these were all the surface, you know, features of the ovary. I also told you the peritoneal feature of the ovary. The peritoneum covers the complete covers completely the ovary, but anteriorly it is deficit. A small area anteriorly is deficit, which is called hilus of ovary where the peritoneum reflects back in which is called the meso ovarium and it is continuous with the posterior layer of the broad ligament of ovary this all makes sense when we consider this broad ligament and relation of the ovary with the broad ligament ovary is present posteriorly to it so now we will talk about the supports of the ovary so guys let's talk about the supports of the ovary there are three main supports of the ovary, the meso ovarium, round ligament of ovary and suspensory ligament of ovary or also called infundibulo pelvic ligament. These first two we you know uh, studied before but this one is new but let me tell you we studied about it before as well. Just let me explain the meso ovarium first. You know the meso ovarium we talked about it peritoneum reflected on ovary surface anterior surface and connected with the posterior layer of broad ligament of uterus it was called meso ovarium it supports ovary by also keeping it it in its place and also by supplying the ovarian and different arteries which supply the ovary they pass through the meso ovarium through the hilus of the ovary into the ovary this was the one second was the round ligament of ovary this is actually a fibromuscular cord. The mesoverium was peritoneum, peritoneum condensation, but the round ligament of the ovary is actually a fibromuscular cord which connects lower pole of ovary to the lateral uterine border. As, uh, this supports the ovary and this ligament is also responsible for the horizontal position of the ovary in multiparous women. We talked about it, right? That in nulliparous women, the ovaries are vertical while in multiparous women the ovaries are horizontal the reason is that during pregnancy the uterus enlarges enormously as a result this ligament stretches and the ovary becomes horizontal in position this was the round ligament of ovary this is the second support third support is suspensory ligament of ovary you see the broad ligament of uterus continues from lateral uterine wall to, sorry lateral uterine border to the lateral pelvic wall actually the part of broad ligament of uterus from superior pole of ovary and infundibulum to the lateral pelvic wall is called the suspensory ligament of ovary this actually supports the ovary I don't eat uh, that's you know hangs it in its place and also it is important because it contains ovarian vessels and nerves plexuses which supply the ovary through the hilus they run in this suspensory ligament so this suspensory ligament is very important this is also called infundibulo pelvic ligament right as the name suggests infundibulo pelvic from the infundibulum and superior lower po uh, pole of the ovary to the lateral pelvic wall infundibulo pelvic ligament so these three were support of the ovary very important very easy to understand i drew the diagram so you could understand that's it.